So how should we talk about this? Do we want to talk about them side for side alongside some of the other Targon cards that have invoked that give you specific cost units? Or do we just talk about them all in broad? I think first of all, the invoke units that give you, that just say invoke, are going to give you like such a, there's going to be such a huge amount of variance. So already I'm not sure about the power of the general invoke cards. But these celestial cards are like super high value, right? Individually. Okay, so like MKRR. Is that how it's actually pronounced? MKRR, top left card here. Reduce the cost of a card in hand by one. This card costs zero. Okay, in general, if you think about it like this, when we play these celestial cards, when we play these invoke cards, we're not gonna we're not gonna hit these consistently. Yeah, thanks for following, man. We're never gonna hit these invoke cards specific. Uh, we're never going to hit these celestial cards specifically. So first of all, it makes it hard for you to consider building a deck around getting specific cards every single time, unless you are running those cards that state get a four, five, or six or less than three. And if more of those ones come out, it makes it easier. But in general, they're all super powerful enough that you could build an invoke deck strictly for value, and you'll be fine. Reducing the cost of a card in hand by one is cute. Uh, the first thing I think about is the fact that we can build a combo deck that reduces the cost of our most important combo piece by one, but we're not gonna hit this consistently enough. This can work both ways in terms of putting it into a control deck. It could also work playing it alongside aggro, no joke. Reducing the cost of anything by one for zero mana is good tempo. So this card's pretty powerful. I think this might oftentimes be a card that's picked up a lot by invoke decks that run mid-range minions. Tian Kami, which is the snake here, the serpent, zero mana two one with challenger. Really good for tempo for similar reasons to the card on the left, but this one provides a body. This will be picked up by any invoke deck that runs like aggro. This will probably be less than oftentimes considered or picked up because most of the time you're probably looking for more value. There'll probably be niche scenarios where you want to go full aggressive, but towards the later half of the game, you'll probably never pick this up. It'd be great for Nightshade, yes. It'd be These cards are really good for Nightfall, no joke. So if you want to go full aggressive with some sort of invoke cards, these cards might be considered. But by the time you kind of get to your invoke cards, unless you play the one mana discard one, these might not be as relevant half the time. This one will be considered sometimes on the left. More than this card here on the right. So then we have the one mana silence of follower. Is that a permanent silence? Um, having access to another purify in any form is actually pretty good because purify is like one of those cards that like when you main deck it, it feels bad a lot of the time, but I can imagine finding it off invoke is sometimes going to be a game breaker. I mean, if at the moment, a lot of the cards that are good targets for silence probably aren't going to be seeing much play next expansion because of all the interaction with them. So having a card like this right now, discoverable in the current meta is pretty strong. Next, ex uh, next expansion cycle, probably not as strong, probably won't be considered very often from your choices, um, but it will have a niche scenario where it hits something really good. Is this going to, there's going to be so much variance that I'll talk about these cards in a general sense of their general uses, but the fact that you can at any point discover any of these cards makes them all quite powerful for any certain situation. Now the Charger with the Overwhelm. This card, I think, is going to be considered a lot more than not, especially going into a matchup where they can't really interact with one HP. Like imagine playing a 1 mana 4 one that can't be interacted by your opponent other than trading the units off. It's like Joel Hunters when it hits really good value in certain matchups. I think the charge is great. And I think it helps any sort of aggressive deck, even mid range. The charger will be considered a lot more than not. Card's pretty crazy. But then again, as I'm saying, like I think most people are gonna opt into getting more value into their deck. Like I can tell you right now, I'm pretty sure when people play Invoke, they're more than likely picking anything from like three mana upwards. And they might pick this um, dog for card draw. But yeah, when I'm looking at the best case scenarios for these cards and this charger goes into some sort of aggro mid-range style, you'll pick it up if you're trying to end the game. Like, I don't know, super flexible. What's the Moonglow do? Two mana, grant an ally plus two and spell shield permanently. Moonglow. It's decent. You'll probably consider this sometimes. 
Yeah, the spell shield will be permanent. Good, it just says permanent spell shield until it's popped. It's only plus two HP, by the way, Arcanus. Not both stats. Yeah, you might consider this. First of all, what does the in invoke deck look like? It's like, this card's okay. I think the puppy here, the one that draws you a card, the messenger, when I'm summoned, draw one. Yeah, I think this card's pretty good. I think control decks will just pick this up to keep cycling through the deck sometimes to find their bigger answers. You'll oftentimes see, you'll oftentimes see the messenger being picked up above 50% of the time if it's there. I had an idea to consider making some sort of invoke Yasuo Leona deck that just kind of fights for value. So in in that case where I made a Yasuo Leona invoke deck, the three mana slow spell that stuns two enemies is pretty good. Fake hero, are you the next reveal revealer after the Korean boy? No, no. <laughs> Unfortunately, I'm not reviewing any cards, but thanks for popping in. That would be fun though. Hey, well, Max. How you going, buddy? I'm outside of uh, this Yasuo Invoke deck. You'll consider the Crescent when you're in a bad situation and your opponent's about to like slam you with an open attack. But the fact that it's slow makes it kind of hard to really use in that scenario. So <laughs> we'll be using this mostly for the offensive. So every now and then you might pick up this card if you have a pretty big board. You can consider going for a big attack. You play a three mana stun two and it usually nets you one extra um, point of damage at least because you get the stun two for their single play. So your stun two units, they'll play one unit. You've got an extra unit hitting face. <laughs> uh, three mana, three, three with elusive. Um, this card is pretty good. Don't think we need to say much else about that. As we start to get higher in terms of the value of these cards, a lot more of them are going to see a lot more play than the rest. So from four mana upwards, you'll see these getting played a lot more. Now this um, Jupison, this card right here is going to be the bane of the meta. This is going to be the most... <laughs> this card right here is literally going to be the bane of the meta. You guys don't know it yet, but this card is just going to be a problem. I don't think people realize it yet because it's going to be about the, the fact the player, <laughs> it's going to be, it's going to be about the player who gets more Jupersons, right? So whoever plays, gets the Jupersons, plays Jupersons to get another Jupersons, and they eat Jupersons over and over, sometimes some matchups are going to come down to that. Like who is getting more Jupersons? And it's going to be really toxic, and it's going to remind me a lot of Hearthstone. I can't wait. Jupersons is super toxic. Don't sleep on Jupiter. the ability to generate 3-4s over and over and over again, which won't happen all the time, but sometimes it will happen, and it will cost you a game because your opponent just has more value. It's unlimited cycle, guys. It's unlimited cycle. Think about it. Unlimited cycle. Yeah, so I think, I think this card's generally pretty crazy. It's going to be picked up more often times than not. Like, what's going to happen is... You're going to get a selection of cards. You're going to get offered a Jupson. And you're going to look at the other two and go, Oh, the other two aren't as good as I'd hoped. Let me take a Jupson and try and go for a better card. This card's literally just toxic as. I think they should make Jupson um, invoke. Like, play invoke once and that's it. Like, you can't find another Jupson. Like, it should state underneath it um, in, like, brackets, can't discover or can't invoke Jupson. Like afterwards, if that makes sense. Like however they word it to make it seem like you can't discover another Jupiter is what they need to do. All right, written in the stars. This is the card that Swim revealed. Draw a champion, reduces cost by one, granted plus two, plus two. Look guys, you've got your way to cycle Yasuo. Yay! We can finally cycle Yasuo. It's about time. You can also use it on curve, you can. Jupiter is crazy. Written in the stars, pretty good. If, you, if you're building a deck with singleton champions and you have a card that guarantees you finding a 4, 5, or 6 card, which we do have a card that does guarantee us finding us uh, invoking a 4, 5, or 6, written in the stars is pretty good. 4 mana, draw 1, granted plus 2, plus 2. Not too bad. It's at burst speed too. I'm not sure how often the burst speed is going to be relevant. You'll see this played more as a slow speed spell anyway. 
but it gives your opponent one less priority so i guess it's okay Rooting in the start seems okay i think there's going to be scenarios where it provides a little bit of tempo but it's more of a slow card for sure like you're placing buffs on um bigger units i think swim stated an example where you buff zed you buff zed that's kind of cute i guess you can play zed on what turn five i don't know about playing zed on turn five i think i just want to like end the game but yeah written in stars is pretty good it's pretty good for sure i think it will have um it will be seen picked up a lot of the time like some decks just want to find their champion cards Written in the stars allows you just to draw your deck and provide a little bit more value than let's say the uh the other draw cards here. Yeah, written in the stars is pretty good. You'll oftentimes see that written in the stars picked up over the puppy in a late later game deck where the games are gonna drag out. Cause getting two stats onto another unit's way more relevant. And drawing into your champions is way relevant. Meteor shower. Five mana deal four to an enemy and one to another. It says deal four to an enemy, so you can slap this into their face. Oh, no, you can't. Sorry, no, 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 you can't. This can only target units. The one to another, I think, can target the face, though. I'm not entirely sure. Because this reminds me a lot of um, Static Shock, and Static Shock can hit face. So I think this can hit face, right? Can Meteor Shower hit face? An enemy. Yeah, I'm pretty sure this can hit face. So if Meteor Shower can hit face... You'll see this picked up a lot. If it can't hit face, you won't. It, I think I'm pretty sure it hits face. So assuming it hits face, Meteor Shower is pretty good. It's a good closer. If you're making a target on Ezreal deck, you'll pick this up a lot of the time. Uh, Meteor Shower is a great card. Super flexible. The one to another is really relevant here. Otherwise, it's just a is this just a decimate on steroids? This will oftentimes want to go face, and the one to another is like can sometimes net you cheap value. Meteor Shower is really good. Celestial, this is the card that BBG revealed. Celestial, the warrior, challenger. Five mana, five, five with challenger. Yeah, they are gonna change the meta. Do you know how it's gonna change it? They're gonna change it to a meta where it's all about who gets the better invoke. I'm a little bit concerned, but not too concerned. Just, I played a lot of Hearthstone. This, this kind of reminds me of that a little bit, but I think it will be okay. I think we'll be okay. I'm a little bit concerned, but I think we'll be okay. The Warrior, Challenger 5-5, five, five. it's decent. It's okay. Like I think at first glance, it looks worse than it is. I think it's gonna be above average being able to challenge five, uh, have a 5-5 five, five of Challenger contests a lot of important five drops. It also contests elusive units. This will be picked up. This will be picked up when like somebody's playing a mid-range deck, they've gotten an evoke, they see the 5-5, five, five, they'll grab it. They'll continue to put pressure down. You can't main deck these cards. That's correct, Dice. How are you? So Meteor Shower, the Warrior. The Warrior is good. Don't get me wrong. I think the Warrior is good. Six mana, Obliterated Enemy. Yo, I think this card low key, low key guys, Obliterated Enemy is very good. It is very good. It probably doesn't look as good as it is, in the obliterate the obliterate won't be too relevant but it's still a six mana destroy anything and then for the off chance they're running some sort of weird tech cards it plays around that too so that's great so then next we have these two cards the controversial cards con the controversial cards that uh didi hoi hoi ni revealed so you have a six mana four three with elusive so do they both summon each other or do you always just get given this one and then it summons that one? I'm assuming these cards summon each other. If that's the case, this card's fucking crazy for tempo. This card's insane. So six mana, four, three, Luna slash Solar followers. Solar has life still and summons the Luna unit, which is elusive when summoned. Wait, so if you're telling me only the Solar one has summoned the elusive, what happens if you discover the elusive unit? You're gonna feel so bad. You can only invoke the gold one and it summons the silver one. So you can't invoke this one. So you always get given the gold one and it summons this one. This card's fucking insane. This card's generally just insane. Every deck can consider picking this up. 
just for the sheer amount of stats in a single card spread along two bodies. Of course, your opponent could play the box, but who's going to be playing the box next meta? People are just going to be playing Passage Unearned instead if they're going Control Shadow Isles most of the time, I think. In general, this card's insane. There's going to be a rare case scenario where your opponent has an answer to it, but it slows them down dramatically. It's going to be hard for them to clear both. Yeah, dude, this... um. The Luna follower is crazy. It's just too many stats. This is like Snapvine on steroids. The card's low key insane, guys. That should wrap up like the general talk about these cards. Well, in the end, what I will say is that, as I mentioned, more than likely when people play invoke decks, you're not going to see these cards very often. We are only going to be picking 4 mana above. Thanks for the knowledge, Color Chuchi, by the way. 5 more mins till next reveal. Grant! Grant! No fucking way, man. 7 mana refill spell mana grant units plus 2 plus 2 everywhere. What? That can't be right. What? Whoa, cunt. Cunt, guys. That is... Wait, what? Like, Remember how I told you? Remember how I said a moment ago it's going to be about who gets the 3 mana, uh, the 4 mana, 3, 4 invoke card over and over? Now it's going to be like... Who gets this card? Because you're going to feel so bad if you don't hit this card. Because like, what if you're playing a mirror matchup and one person hits this card and the other one doesn't? With no guaranteed way of discovering this card, it's going to feel really bad. It, okay, okay, I got really hyped up for a second. It might not be as crazy as it seems. It probably, it probably just is crazy. Oh, refill your spell mana. Okay, okay, sorry guys. Yes. Refill your spell mana. So Tenko is right. Sorry, the Galachi. The Galachuchi is right. Okay, so it's not as crazy as I thought. But still, for similar reasons, as I said, in a sense of a mirror matchup or decks that are aiming to do similar things the person who, who hits this card and the person who doesn't hit this card is going to feel really bad so that kind of sucks to see okay the destroyer overwhelm 7 7 is that spell shield that's the spell shield icon right spell shield is a permanent effect or is it like barrier but barrier is not always permanent only only when the effect states grant me this turn it should be permanent until it's procced lux is the only exception no actually oh hang on hang on with barrier though with barrier it's only for the turn it's played right though is that how spell shield works Regardless, it's going to be most relevant when you play it on turn 1, but that is a good question. When I'm summoned, grant me plus 1 for each celestial card you've played this game. Spell shield is permanent unless stated otherwise. Okay, if you're sure about that, then, then yeah, that's good. I will say, this card seems insane. But you would hate... <laughs> you would hate to miss that discover effect you would hate to miss the good invoke oh no i can see it all happening guys people are going to be invoking hope hoping to find the destroyer for their awesome new deck but they're not going to hit it half the time yeah but it does it does force them to have to have double answers to it though that's that's the that's the main issue if they haven't got double answers to the spell shield then This card's gonna win games. There's gonna be so many games that come down to the invoke. It's gonna be like, who gets the most destroyers? Oh no, it's gonna be the destroyer meta. 
It's going to be, I'm going to invoke and find 500 destroyers. And hopefully that's enough to win the game. In terms of value engines, in terms of a value engine, it's, it's really good. Like it gives, it gives invoke the like late game win condition. <sighs> yeah, we haven't even seen. So I think it's only going to go up to eight mana if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, this card seems really good. Being able to discover this multiple times is crazy. If it should be eight, then what the hell? Yeah, I think a soul is going to be nine mana because it's going to curve out after all the invoke cards. What the hell's the eight mana card going to be, guys? This card seems wild. It rewards you building. It rewards you a lot by building a very heavily designed invoke deck this card yeah is the reason why you would consider making invoke in general now like all the other cards we've seen up to so far have been kind of like invoke seems kind of cool but as we start to see is late game bombs yeah nah this is um this is um this is good a cost will be obliterate all units in the field in hand let's go let's get a dark hole let's get a dark hole in legends of runeterra guys do you know what I mean? Like, where's... Like, a Ruination's Dark Hole, I guess. But Ruination's kind of poo. I mean, if it's an 8-mana Obliterate Everything, it's an upgraded Ruination. Which which is not unreasonable. Because you do have to sacrifice your deck building for um, for the Invoke effect. A Soul could be a 10-drop. That, that would mean 20 token cards. I mean, are we going to see our first 10-mana champion, guys? Are we about to see the first 10-mana champion? Yeah, can you imagine what the 8 mana cards are going to look like? Oh, They're going to be crazy!